What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff, and now that the Sony a7S III has a Cinetone, I wanted to find out if it's any good, what the dynamic range and colour looks like, and also how it compares to S-Log3. It's time for me to shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video will be in the description box below. And of course, this isn't sponsored content, so I'd love it if you could show some love for the channel and hit that notification bell next to your subscribe button. It just means the world to me. It makes a huge difference for the channel. Thank you kindly. So, s Cinetone is a combination of s Cinetone Gamma and s Cinetone Color Space. The Gamma itself is a linear contrast curve, a bit like Cine 1, 2, 3, and 4. So really, it should be exposed normally and so that you're protecting the highlight areas. It has high contrast in the low luminance levels, the shadows, and has low contrast in the high luminance areas, the highlight and brighter areas. But when Sony made s Cinetone, the priority color-wise was definitely skin tones. So let's start there and see how it compares to S-Log3. So this is s Cinetone, and this is straight out of camera. I've done no corrections whatsoever. I've got to say, I love the look of the skin tones straight out of camera. But one thing to bear in mind with s Cinetone is that when you expose lower, your skin tones will be more saturated. And of course, the reverse is true. When you expose brighter, your skin tones will become less saturated. So when I bump the exposure up a little bit, it looks like this. Now, whilst our skin tones are still within the acceptable range of how we should expose them, you can tell they look noticeably less saturated. So when I expose it slightly more darker than our original clip, it looks like this. You can see all the extra saturation in my skin tones and it still looks flattering. When we step to an even darker exposure, we can see that it's bordering on being underexposed, but still you can see even more saturation. But the common theme here is it always looks flattering on skin tones. This is illustrated even better when we look at them side by side. I'd say either the original clip or the slightly darker clip. I'm going to select the slightly darker exposed version because you get that extra saturation and that's the one I want to compare with S-Log3. And this is S-Log3 ever so slightly overexposed. And then when we add a lookup table, it looks like this. This is with the Alistair Chapman Venice look lookup table. I actually really love what this does to my skin tones. It's lovely and warm and you can tell there's a lot of dynamic range and there's absolutely nothing clipped at all in the highlight areas. When we look at them side by side, we can see that s Cinetone definitely has more contrast. The colours, I would say, are definitely more natural looking on s Cinetone. However, I do prefer how flattering they look on S-Log3. I can't quite say what it is, it's just a certain soft smoothness you get on S-Log3 that I really like. A quick tip for you, when you first upgrade the firmware of your A7S3 and then you dive into the picture profile menus to find s Cinetone, go into those picture profile settings and check that you're happy with the presets. The default detail level for s Cinetone is minus five, I happen to prefer even lower at minus seven, so that's what I'm saying is Definitely go in and there's no reason why you can't tailor the profile even more to your liking. Sony says that s Cinetone has essence of film tone. So I wanted to see next what it looked like in daylight. So I went out there and got some more test shots. So here is s Cinetone and this was shot on a very overcast day. So it's not the most contrasty shot ever, but I really wanted to see what s Cinetone did with those natural tones you get in the trees. For these clips, I thought it'd be interesting to let the camera auto white balance just to see what would happen. And to me, this looks too magenta compared to what it looked like to the eye. The question is, does this have essence of film tone? I'm not sure. Anyway, moving on, here is S-Log3, exposed nice and brightly, and then when I add a grade, it looks like this. For this grade, I did color correction, used color curves, and then I applied a lookup table, and in this case, it was the Phantom Utopia lookup tables, which I love. As always, they're linked below, and of course, you get a discount when you use the promo code HARV. When we look at them side by side, you can see there's a pretty big difference. I love the soft and natural look you get with s Cinetone, but to be honest, my preference is still S-Log3. It's just a personal thing. I just really like that you can dial in the exact amount of contrast exactly where you need it with color curves. Interestingly, one thing I noticed is when I used the neutral lookup table from Phantom Lutz, the colors became way more similar. Sure, there's a little bit more contrast and a little bit more saturation, but the colors are basically really similar. So if you want s Cinetone color, but with S-Log3 dynamic range, this neutral LUT is the one to go for. 
Next, I wanted to check out the color you get with Escinitone, and bear in mind that it's not necessarily gonna be super accurate because it's designed to be flattering. Let's see. So this is Escinitone, and immediately I'm really impressed by the bold primary colors and striking contrast you get. To describe it, the words that come to mind are natural and punchy. And just a quick note, with all of these examples, when I start filming in a new mode, I do a custom white balance to make sure that the colors are as accurate as they can be. And then here is S-Log3 with that same Alistair Chapman lookup table. And straight away, my eye is actually drawn to the wood surface, which looks to me to be a little bit more on the greeny side. But then the more I look at this example, the more I'm impressed with the colors in this one. The colors actually look even more accurate and definitely a little bit more saturated than s -Cinetone. Looking at them side by side, and again with s -Cinetone, I'm super impressed. The colors look really accurate. That Venice LUT obviously gives our S-Log3 footage loads of saturation, and I suspect if I dial it back a bit, I can probably get them looking quite close. In fact, let me do it now. And boom, a couple of tweaks to the contrast and saturation, and we've got things looking pretty similar. Sony say that s cinetone has 460% of dynamic range. That's actually the same as Cine 1 and 2. S-Log3, on the other hand, has 1300% of dynamic range, but of course it's a logarithmic curve, so it would be very unfair to compare them, but I'm gonna. So this is s and this is the test that I like to do for testing real-world dynamic range. I'm standing in front of a window and it's really bright and sunny outside. I've exposed so that my face is correctly exposed. And as you can see, it's completely blown out outside. It's all highlights. So what if we expose it the other way and expose it so you can see what's going on outside? Well, that looks like this. You can see what's going on outside the window fine, but obviously my face is way, way underexposed and there's nothing you can do about this in post. The real world solution to this, of course, is to keep the exposure like this and just add some lighting. But of course, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to compare the dynamic range. And to be really fair to s -Cinetone, this is actually really good for a linear gamma. It starts to roll off the highlights at around 70%, so it is a really nice looking profile for this. And then when we compare it to S-Log3, it looks like this. Typically flat, so now let's add the same lookup table again. And the difference is massive. Yes, I'm exposed, not bright enough, and yes, outside is exposed too brightly, but that dynamic range is stunning. And to show you just how much more dynamic range it has, we can edit a color curve just before our lookup table and we can achieve this. Now, just to be clear, this is not usable footage in the real world, but wow, the amount of detail you can pull out of that footage is insane. Here's the side by side and you can see the s cinetone overexposed, underexposed, and then the S-Log3 footage. s cinetone is great when it comes to dynamic range, especially the way it handles highlights, but compared to S-Log3, well, it's in a different league. So I think for a lot of people, what s cinetone represents is a really fast workflow, flattering color and contrast, and in theory, not a lot of work needed in post-processing. But can you calibrate s cinetone and should you? Or should you just leave it alone? Let's see. So here is s cinetone and believe it or not, I exposed this at zero on the meter on the back of the camera. It just goes to show you should ignore that meter. So I made some small adjustments to the exposure, and then did some color correction, and then added a cool looking lookup table. It's actually the green leaf lookup table from Velocore, link below, it's great. And then some further tweaks to my highlights and shadows, a small amount of vignette, and then some widescreen bars. So there we go, I like this look. It is fairly highly stylized, but you can go in any direction you like. And to answer our question, should you color grade a Cinetone? Well, yes, you can do. You don't have to, but you definitely can. I think the key is just to be gentle with it. You can't push and pull it too much and just make sure you have some of those lookup tables that are designed for linear profiles on standby. So just to be clear, I am sure that you'll really like the results that you'll get with a Cinetone, but if you're expecting your footage to immediately look like professionally graded Ari Alexa LF footage, think again, because I would say a much closer comp would be something like Cine 4. So what do you think? Will you be shooting S in its own from now on? Does this make the Sony FX3 a little redundant? For me, I expect I'll be using s whenever I need to shoot videos in a linear gamma, like the shorter videos that I do when I'm sat on my sofa. On the whole, I'll be using S-Log3 for the majority of things I shoot, 
due to its phenomenal dynamic range and that extra flexibility you get with grading. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions in the comment section below if you want to. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.